Hi guys, I'm Fera from Guitars AI and I welcome you to this first revision on computer-aided musicology. So we are going over again some basic objects we used in previous examples like pitch, duration, note, intervals, scales and the stream. So this is uh, an overview of uh, most of the things we've done before. Sometimes uh, not going some deep, so deep, or so, and, and maybe sometimes going deeper than what we've seen. So uh, uh, as usual, uh, available in GitHub. <clears throat> I'm running uh, today uh, remotely, so I'm using MindBinder. You find the the link on GitHub and um, also at the YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, everything configured for you. You don't need to install anything. And we start importing uh, Music 21 Python package. And this Python display and this function here is just used because um, I'm using this remote server and I'm using LilyPond to display a PNG of musical scores. If you are uh, running locally and you have other uh, software like music score and everything's configured you would not need this and if you put for example a string dot show uh, and it would show straight away without any uh, hacks so let's start with a uh, pitch so uh, the pitch can be defined as a perceptible attribute um, frequency related uh, and how our humans perceive uh, sound so uh yeah it can be uh, determined as a frequency of a sine wave is matched to a to a note um so uh, yeah in music 21 we can create a pitch object so we use uh, what i'm doing here i'm creating an a flat uh the fourth octave and the speech ob objects have have many attributes and functions we can use so we can print the, the full name with A flat in octave four. We can uh, see the name in, in different languages. Uh, like here I'm using Italian, but there's Spanish, German, French. So it's the La Bemol. We can also print a, a nice flat symbol instead of the minus, which is used here when you use the Unicode name with octave. From the pitch, we can get a MIDI number and we can also uh, get a frequency so this is very useful uh, for many things when you want to uh, construct MIDI or you want to go from frequency to to musical notes uh, pitch also has this uh, transpose function so when I'm using like an integer as an attribute as a, an argument of the function it's um, it considers half steps so I'm transposing one half step it means that it goes from a flat to, to A, and I can also give uh, an interval, for example, a perfect fifth. So in this case, I'm transposing the A, uh, which is this uh, P2, this is the second pitch, is the A4. I'm transposing to the perfect thick, which is a Mi, in Spanish it was an E5. Yeah. The pitch, we can also have harmonics, and it's very interesting to get the harmonics. Um, from uh from notes so we're starting from the uh standard tuning frequency on the equal temperament um, tuning system we've been using in western music um as the a4 of 440 hertz we can get uh so i'm just using here the first second third fourth and fifth harmonic but we can get as many harmonics as we want and we see here so the first harmonic uh, so um, we already see here an interesting thing that is returning for example the third harmonic is a uh, e6 but it's giving us e6 plus 2c so this 2c it means sense and to understand this if you don't understand um, I have a little explanation here so scent also is some some kind of unit that uh, it's a uh, one percent of a semitone so uh, one semitone it's a uh, one twelve of an octave so we divide an octave in 12 notes and each note is uh, the interval between them is a semitone 
So we have a thousand and two hundred cents in an octave. And uh, you can calculate the number of cents between two frequencies using this formula right here. So uh, why it's appearing this um, the sense in this harmonic? Also because um, we are using the equal temperament tuning system. And uh, this temperament, it has uh, errors. So uh, it, it was designed in a way that uh, minimize errors. So we have errors of uh, 1%, uh, a maximum of 1%. But uh, the harmonics, they are inside the harmonic series. So uh, we have this difference between the equal temperament and the harmonic series. Um, and uh, <clears throat> therefore, if we uh, calculate, for example, the third harmonic of the A4, so we will multiply 440 hertz by 3, we will have... Um, 1320 hertz however the formula for a frequency of notes using the equal temperament scale it's given by this formula here where here is like the 12 um, root of 2 to the power of n in this case n is the number of half, half steps from a reference note which so um, in case we're using the 440 is a reference note and to to um, to get the frequency of a node that it's a number of half steps apart we can use this formula here so in this example the third harmonic is um, 19 half steps apart so i'm plugging these numbers into this equation and i get the frequency of the e6 using the equal temperament scale should be 1318 but in the harmonic series and using the third harmonics and multiplying this by three we have this 1320 so therefore we have this two cents uh, difference between the equal temperament scale and the harmonic series yeah so um it's very interesting to understand how um, our hearing perceives uh, different pitches. So um, it really depends on which frequency you are. But um, yeah, there is uh, some number of cents that um, if notes are, uh, if pitches are apart from some number of cents, you already distinguish uh, the difference between the speeches. And it's very interesting to notice that uh, other music it's not the modern Western music we are used to. Uh, they they use different uh, maybe they use different temperament scales, and um, you find uh, even guitars with different uh, fret positions. So it's not um, everything uh, regular. And um, yeah, so I just gave here an explanation about sense, as it can be used useful in the future. Um, so, for example, if you're designing um, a digital tuner, you can specify, for example, your precision in, in terms of, uh, of sense. Uh, okay, so we see that pitch, we can also have these harmonics. So, um, it gives us uh, the harmonics. It gives, uh, from a harmonic, it's embedded also a fundamental. So, um, if we take the this um, and we ask for the fundamental, it gives back the, it gives back the A4. Another thing was uh, we can find in pitches is the N harmonics. So um, yeah, the her N harmonics can be seen as uh, alternate musical spelling, which means, for example, that um, uh, A flat. Is the same as a is a G sharp, and uh, so uh, the, our pitch number one, which was the A flat here. So if we use this uh, get all common enharmonics, it will give us the G sharp, and you can also get uh, this the. Um, if you get uh, 
lower enharmonic or if you get a higher enharmonic yeah the uh, the common enharmonics is limited to a maximum of two so it cannot be like sharp sharp or flat flat but it, in this case so the uh, a flat is a B flat 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 so to define a note we need not only the pitch but we also need the duration and music 21 also has this object it's called duration so in most of uh, the cases, the duration is given in relation to quarter notes. So for example, if we want to uh, define an, an eighth note, it means it's a half uh, quarter note. So this is uh, what we're doing here. We can also change the type uh, to, uh, for example, a whole. And when we uh, ask for the full name of this duration, it's a, it's a whole and uh, the whole note has a duration of four quarter notes yeah, so uh, putting together the pitch and the duration we can have a note object so uh, in this case we're building a note it's an a4 and we're giving it uh, a duration of an eighth note so we're setting the quarter length of 0 0.5 so when we print this note full name and this note pitch we can see that's a in octave four and it's an eighth note and its pitch it's an a4 so as pitches note also has this transpose uh, function and we can transpose and we're creating a second note which is the minor third of the first note so the minor third of an a will be a c so we're transposing using the, the, this function and then printing its full name. And we also need the rests, which um, yeah, are pauses. So uh, we can define using the note rests and we, uh, we set a whole or a half or quarter. We can uh, also define as uh, in relation to the, the quarter length. So now we have notes. We can also have intervals, which is our, which are distance in, in um, between two two pitches, and uh, we already seen uh, before. And uh, here, for example, I'm constructing an interval which is a minor seven, and we can print um, this nice name, which is minor seven, and it's like uh, relative to ten semitones. We can also transpose uh, using uh, an interval. So if we create a minor seven interval and we define a new note transposing first note using this interval. So we are using the A4, which is defined here, which is note number one. And note number three now is transposing note number one using the minor seven interval defined here. So the original note was an A in octave four, eighth note, the transposed note, which is the minor seven, is the G in octave fifth. And you see that the duration doesn't change, we're only transposing speech. And we can also transpose uh, reversed, so not an interval forward, but backwards. So for this, we can use this, uh, we reverse the interval, and then we transpose, and this is what I'm doing right here. So, uh, yeah, we've seen different uh, ways to use intervals and how we can also build scales and that we uh, get um, intervals and we can choose, for example, um, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, half step, and we uh, can construct where we can give uh, the um, unison, uh, the second, minor third, perfect fourth, perfect fifth. We can also give uh, intervals like this. As we've seen before and we also have uh, scales so um, music 21 has already uh, some inbuilt scales for example like the harmonic minor scale so we're constructing a harmonic minor scale using this formula 
and uh, now we're printing all the pitches that uh, are uh, inside the scale and we can also uh, use these uh, small functions here like nodes to interval and we uh, come seeing so is uh, the, the harmonic minor is the the third the tonic major second minor third perfect fourth perfect fifth minor sixth major seven so these are the nodes the intervals that make the harmonic minor scale another interesting thing that um, uh, scales have is called as the derived rank so uh, if we give for example uh, three notes which I'm giving here is the um, is a C minor is the C um, is the tonic minor th third and the fifth so is the uh, C the E flat and the G and it will derive uh, all the harmonic minor scales that contains these three notes so it's telling me that the three notes are in the G harmonic minor in the E harmonic minor and in the C harmonic minor and we find two of them on the B flat harmonic minor so if we construct here the B flat harmonic minor and then we see that indeed we have the C we have the E flat but we don't have the G we have a G flat so this is why it's saying that there are only two instances uh, of those nodes in this um, in a, this harmonic uh, B flat harmonic minor so uh, another interesting thing we can also do is to uh, find for example a harmonic minor scale that has uh, the note C as the seventh degree and it tells us that the D flat harmonic minor scale has a C as a, in its seventh degree and if we construct here the D flat harmonic minor scale and we see there's a tonic second third fourth fifth sixth seventh so it has a C and as a seventh degree Another interesting thing we can do, and we've seen before, this is what uh, I have a list of intervals here, and I'm constructing a minor pentatonic using these intervals. So this function will return me a list of pitches. So when I construct an uh, A um, minor pentatonic, so we have these five notes here, and if we want to see which um, these five notes are inside which major scales so we can construct a major scale and we can derive the minor pentatonic pitches and it tells us that the minor the a minor pentatonic is inside the g major scale the f major scale and the c major scale so this, uh, this can be also useful in analyzing uh, sequences of notes and trying to find out uh, what scale it belongs yeah. so those are the building blocks um, mostly uh, is in pitch and duration they are objects that the are inside a node so the node we can use uh, intervals and scales and uh, we can also generate a stream so a stream is, is a musical score by itself so in this case we're just creating uh, a stream and I'm appending uh, first a rest it's a whole bar of rests and then I'm appending the A minor pentatonic notes so the A minor pentatonic in this function is returning me a list of pitches but to uh, make a string we need notes by definition if we don't specify the duration it's going to be quarter notes so uh, I'm converting each pitch from this uh, list to a note so I'm creating notes and then here's a list of notes that I'm appending and we can uh, change how it's displayed we can uh, go to different clefs 
we can put here as a different um, so two by three or five by four uh, yeah we can include the many different things in um, in the stream so uh, yeah this was a, a short revision of um, some objects we've seen so far and uh, yeah check you later Hi guys, I'm Fer from Guitars AI and I welcome you to this Python tutorial where you are going to follow the steps of Pythagoras and his observations and studies about the different ratios of um, string lengths of the Greek lira and uh, how uh, we went from there to the diatonic scale and the chromatic scale that's used nowadays in Western music. So uh, there are many legends uh, surrounding Pythagoras and his music uh, mathematics studies. There is a famous one in which he uh, observed and experimented with uh, uh, hammers. Uh, one day he saw a blacksmith hitting with different hammers and that were making different sounds. And uh, he experimented with that and he came out with ratios. Uh, the thing is that the physics behind it is not really working with hammers but uh, his ideas uh, in another legend that he was um, studying he wanted to study Greek music and he started to study and observe the ratio between uh, the, the lengths of strings in a lira so uh, and these, these ratios they uh, they stand the physics behind the stand and we can uh, use some uh, standing waves equations in a string to fundament this this thinking anyway uh, Pythagoras was a genius a mathematician philosopher and his contribution also in music is uh, phenomenal so let's get started as usual I'll import the packages we're going to use so I'm, I'm using the music 21 library to handle uh, musical notes and pitches um, display Python display and image and uh, these functions you're already familiar with it if you're following other videos that is to uh, to display the musical score generated by music 21 I'm using Librosa to uh, handle audio and to uh, some auxiliary functions like uh, to convert Hertz to notes notes to Hertz and this time I'm using SyncPy just for you to have a feeling how to use uh, symbolic mathematics and how to use Python to um, the very basics of uh, equations manipulation. So before we go into the studies and observations of Pythagoras, we need to uh, go over the string vibration, vibration and the uh, string and um, wave equation of standing waves in a string. So uh, you will find in many different books about this subject, this is a common equation in which the frequency is a function of the square root of uh, characteristics of uh, the string and the tension applied to the string and the length of the string. So uh, the fundamental frequency is the square root of the tension divided by the linear density, which is a like mass per unit length. So um, here is where the, uh, the gauge of the string and the material, what is made, will influence. The tension is like newtons, um, the, the, the strength, you're tuning your string, and the length of the string. So this is a fundamental equation that um, uh, we will use to fundament the uh, observations of Pythagoras. Yeah. One thing to notice is that Pythagoras was working with ratios and when we use ratios it simplifies a lot because uh, if you consider the same string with the same tension and we take the ratio between uh, then just the length will influence uh, the frequency. 
So if we have the same string with uh, the same tension and uh, two different lengths, this will influence the frequency it produces. And when we take the ratio, so we divide this equation by this equation, and we uh, here I'm just um, defining uh, the symbols I'm going to use in SymPy. Here I'm de defining an equation. This is how we do it. So it's this one. Now I'm defining this and this equation. And the equation three, I'm just dividing the left hand side of the equation and e equals to the right hand side of the equation divided. So SymPy already simplifies because this is the same. So the only difference is, uh, so it's F1 divided by F2. And that will be this cancels with each other, and that will be the length two divided by length one. And then we have this equation. And if we solve for f1, this is what we're going to do. This so the f1 is the length two times f2 divided by the length one, and this is a ratio that uh, we are interested at. So what Pythagoras did that he uh, used the same strings and he uh, started to um, observe and to uh, to f listen to the sound produced by strings with different lengths when you have the same uh, the same tension applied to it. So uh, one one uh, way we can um, we can think about this is uh, like in a guitar. So we have here a string, and it's tuned with the tension, and there is this length. And if we move our finger here, which is, would be the same as moving the nut to here, now we are half the way, the same string with the same tension. And we will see that uh, this and this, we have an octave interval. Well, Pythagoras experimented uh, and made different tests with uh, different ratios. And um, in his experience, first thing he found out is the unisonal. So if you have the same string with the same length and the same tension, the sound will be the same. And it's very pleasant to the ears. Another interval that caught his attention was this two by one. So when a string is twice the length of the other, it produces a sound that is, uh, we call it octave. And in his uh, observations, he think it was a very pleasant sound for the ears. So, um, in fact, it was so pleasant that he um, decided that it should have the same name. This, this note should be the same. Just, uh, it's uh, in a different octave. So here, for example, we're just um, defining a note, which is the D3. This fundamental frequency is 146. If we substitute in this equation and we consider that the length of uh, the second L2 is twice of the first one, so we have this ratio of 2 by 1, we will get a D4, which is two, twice the frequency of the D3. So now I'm just using the... Um, Librosa and uh, SymPy. I'm just substituting the values here into this equation just to show that the ratio 2 by 1 will produce uh, an octave. Okay. He experimented with different ratios and some ratios he found out that it was very pleasant to the ears, like the octave for example, and some were not so pleasant. And uh, after the octave, which is the ratio 2 by 1, he was um, very, very impressed with the ratio of 3 by 2. And uh, he said that uh, after the octave, deal, this was uh, the most pleasant interval of all in these uh, in this ratios. So uh, again, if we uh, substitute into this equation, and we put a ratio of 3 by 2. We started with a D, D3. And we calculate, according to this formula, this equation, the ratio of 3 by 2 will give an A3. 
which is the perfect fifth of D. So Pythagoras had this idea. He would uh, just use this. His boundaries would be one octave. So the string would be the ratio of two by one. This is uh, his limits. So it's uh, from D3, for example, to D4. And he wanted to, to use different ratios and see what would uh, come out of this experiment in his attempt to study Greek music and find uh, the notes that are um, characteristic to this uh, kind of music at the time. And then he uh, decided to use the perfect fifth because for him it was uh, the most pleasant interval and it, it was given by this ratio of 3 by 2. So what he did was, uh, he started with uh, D, for example, with a note, and then he would um, make a ratio 3 by 2 and 2 by 3. So he goes a perfect fifth up and perfect fifth down. Every time this new note generated by this ratio was outside of these boundaries that he, uh, that he uh, decided, he would just ship by one octave, so multiply by two or divide by two in a way that it would be always be inside this, uh, this interval, these boundaries. So here I'm just doing, uh, this is a function that will take a pitch and it will uh, define this boundary, which is a one octave, so it's a ratio of two by one, and then it will calculate the perfect fifth, which is the ratio of 3 by 2, up and down, and every time it goes out of the boundaries, it transposes to the octave, so it gets inside these boundaries. So we have here um, this function, there is the forward, which is I'm transposing forward, so um, it's the fifth, and then a fifth backwards. So we have these two sections here. So, so the results of his uh, studies and observations are really interesting. So um, when we apply this uh, technique, that uh, you define an interval with the ratio 2 by 1, it will define an octave. And then from the, um, the, the first note, you take an ascending perfect fifth and a descending perfect fifth. If it's outside of your boundary, you transpose it by one uh, octave or dividing the ratio by 2 or multiplying by 2. So you make sure you are always inside this interval. And um, you do this note by note, so you generate the next notes, and the next note you take the ascending perfect fifth and descending perfect fifth, and you keep doing this. What we notice is, if you take the first five notes doing this, we have this scale, uh, starting on D, which is uh, a very, very uh, famous scale. It's the... Um, Is the pentatonic, the major pentatonic, starting on D. So already with these five notes, Pythagoras could uh, explain a lot of the music was doing and was being done uh, at the at the time. And in fact, a lot of the liras, the tuning, were um, based on the, this pentatonic. If you keep it going, not only the five, but if you take seven notes, we end up with the Dorian mode, which is uh, the diatonic uh, scale, the major scale, but starting in D. So already here we see that this is the basics of the diatonic music, Western music, uh, this is how we use until today. And if we keep it going, 
So we're now uh, using uh, the 12. We see that this is the chromatic scale. So we have all the 12 semitones of the chromatic scale from D to, to D. So it's very interesting to see how uh, this ratio study of Pythagoras we can have uh, the pentatonic, we can have uh, the um, diatonic, and we can have the chromatic scale. So after this, if you if you keep uh, going, it starts repeating itself in terms of notes, not in terms of the mathematical relation. But if you convert the mathematical relation to the notes we uh, use today, it will repeat itself. And uh, so yeah, going over again, uh, Pythagoras had this uh, idea to experiment with uh, the ratios of strings with different lengths. So it's the same string, the same tension, but different lengths. And then he's checking the sound and he found out that the, uh, the unisono is the ratio one by one. An octave was a ratio two by one and it, it gave the most pleasant sound to the ears. And the second ratio that uh, amazed him was the uh, 3 by 2, which is the perfect fifth. And he based all this process of using the perfect fifth, so the ratio 3 by 2, to, uh, to get nodes inside these boundaries, which was a ratio 2 by 1 inside an octave. With this, we do this experiment and we see that we get... Uh, a chromatic scale what we use today so we have all the notes from C C sharp D E flat with a D sharp F F sharp G G sharp A B flat which is an A sharp B and C we have all the notes of the chromatic scale we have all the notes of a diatonic scale in this way how we constructed we uh, came out with a Dorian of D, which is the same as Ionian of C, which is the major scale of C, and uh, which are the uh, white keys in a piano. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I went uh, very, very briefly, not to scare you with uh, equations, but uh, you've seen how to use SimPy perform some very basic um, symbolic um, operations so we solve uh, this ratio for uh, f1 and it just like f2 goes there multiplying we also substitute some values so we get a ratio 2 by 1 we get the frequency of the d3 with 146 we substitute everything here and we get the new uh, frequency we convert the frequency to a node so we have a d4 we have a function to do this um, uh, ascending and descending transposition of perfect fifths. And if it goes outside the interested octave, we just transpose it back again to inside the, uh, the octave. And by doing this process, we um, got the pentatonic, the major pentatonic of C. We got the major scale of C, the diatonic scale, Ionian Greek mode, and we got the uh, all the 12 semitones that builds up the chromatic scale. So uh, that's it. Feta, Guitars AI, Guitars AI GitHub, Guitars AI YouTube channel. You can take a look in the code, uh, experiment, listen to the uh, MIDI, and uh, check you later. Hi guys, I'm Fera from Guitars AI and I invite you to continue this journey in the fascinating world of computer aid and musicology. This time with a new Jupyter Notebook and a new YouTube series on chords and harmonic field. So we are going to take a look at the chord class from the Music 21 library. Uh, we are going to use scales that we've seen before create some functions to derive the harmonic field from a given scale, 
and then we can also generate a score with the chords of a harmonic field and listen to um, its MIDI. So let's get started. As usual, we are going to um, import the Music 21 library and we start with the chord class. Chord can be seen as three different notes sounding simultaneously. There are different authors uh, with different definitions. Some authors say that uh, any two notes playing together is already a chord. Others say there's a harmonic unit with at least three different tones. So um, you can check out in different books. But we start by creating the C major chord. Use this chord class. We pass three notes. Those are the, the root, the third and the fifth. And we have our chord. So the chord object has some properties. So there's um, the name. So this is the C major triad. We can also have uh, the third, which is the E. We can get the fifth, the seventh. We can transpose from uh, the C major. We transpose by a major third interval and uh, we get a major E. We can also pass in the transpose function instead of uh, interval, we can pass the number of uh, half steps. So the uh, major third is equivalent of four half steps. And uh, we end up with the same E major triad using the transpose. As we've done with notes, we can also display a chord calling the show method. Uh, I'm, I'm running this remotely, so I'm using Lily Pond. And uh, there is this uh, small hack that I already explained in, in previous tutorials to display this nice uh, score. And then from chords, we can uh, go to this idea of harmonic field. So uh, in general, we can say that a harmonic field is a, is a group of chords that are created from notes from a specific scale. And that's exactly what we're going to do. At this point here, I'm creating a C major scale using the scale um, class from Music 21. We already seen how to do that. So I'm just creating a C major scale. And we have here all the notes of this major scale. Uh, previously, we also seen uh, when I demonstrated how to get the Greek modes from the major scale by shifting the, uh, the tonic to a desired degree of scale. So this is the function we used before. I'm going to use it again because the idea is that uh, I will take, for example, to build the, the C chord, it's a um, uh, superposition of thirds. So uh, we will get the um, root, third, fifth, and seventh. And then we will shift to the next note. And then we'll get, this will be the root. Then this will be the third, the fifth, and the seventh and so on. So this is the principle behind it. So from the uh, major scale, what we have here, I'm simply creating list of notes from the, the C major scale. This is what is here. And here is the uh, f defining a function to calculate the harmonic field. So it receives a list of notes as an attribute and will return a list of chords. So I'm creating a list of chords, an empty list. And then we go, we loop through all the nodes of the scale. We will shift to every um, degree using the shift nodes function that was defined before. And we will just return, we create a chord and we append this chord to the chord list and we return the chord, the chord list. And it's exactly, we just taking the, the scales the shifted version of the scales and we're just taking the desired notes that form the chord. So, so when we have a list, it will start the first item, it will end in the last item and it will take this one, then this one, this one, then this one. Then we will shift. This will go to the first position and then it will take this one, this one, this one and so on. So this is what this harmonic field is doing. We are we are superimposing thirds from this uh, scale, only using notes from the major scale, but you can pass any scale you want. And it's the same principle. So here, what I'm doing is just, I'm using the common name from the chord. 
that will give us the C major 7, D minor 7, E minor 7, and so on. So for every chord in the harmonic field of the notes from scale. So harmonic field is this function. Notes from scale is the list of notes from the C major scale. And we have a list of chords. Now, we already have the harmonic field that was built from the C major scale. We can also have a musical score. So if you use the stream score like we uh, used before, we give it a time sig signature. We define which clef we want to use, what is the key, and then I am appending the notes. So from every chord in the harmonic field of the notes from scale, I am giving a duration to each chord, and I'm adding as a lyric. You, you also have this possibility to add, add a lyric, but just to display this text, so it's the name of the chords using the figure, the symbol figure uh, nomenclature, and I'm appending as a lyric, and then we can display and we have this nice score with all the chords from the harmonic field built from the C major scale, and it will sound like this. And that's it. So we basically the only new thing uh, we came across in this Jupyter notebook is the chord class. So we can also, as we created notes, we can create chords, and we define a function using a, a function to uh, shift notes. So we already seen how to generate a Greek modes from a scale, from a major scale. We use this again, and we create define a new function, the harmonic field that uses this function shift notes, and we will generate a list of chords with the chords from the notes built from this the scale given. In this case, it's the C major scale, and we have the harmonic field of the C major scale. That's it. Check you later.